if you got it to work up to this point, at the very least, we have these input fields and we have the update button. It doesn't do anything yet, of course. But the concept is here that I would click on a row. We'll, we can add a button, but the way it'll work right now is anywhere that you click in a row will work, but we can, we can add a button to make it obvious in a moment. Uh, but I, I click on a row, and the point of that is I click a row, and then the, the three items in that row automatically get taken and populate these three fields here. So if I click on BB, it'll do BB, 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 and then I can change the class name to be whatever, whatever, and then click update, and it will put it back into the database and show the results on screen. So the way we'll do this is that uh, we'll code it so that when you click on a particular row, it takes that data and puts it down there on those fields. So we, we just finished building the on line 73, we finished building that functionality uh, down there. So let's go back to... Oh, we forgot to do this again, or I forgot to do this, so minus 10 points for you guys. Um, we forgot to say delete class and the delete class. Remember that? I don't know. Okay, 10 points for you. You're back to zero. So we'll do and delete class. So just a quick comment here that we this is our end of our delete class and this time let's not forget to do it for the next one. Because uh, this is useful, you're going to lose track of things easily. So I want to go to the place after the end of my delete class and I want to build something like on line 76 again where I'm going to click somewhere on the screen that'll help me populate my fields and proceed. So next line after end classes, I'm on line 92. Uh, we need to do something, something very similar again. This time, uh, we'll do the jQuery selector again. And the way we'll do this one is, we did body previously, um, but this time we need to be a little bit more, in a, in a sense, specific, because we have a div that is displaying all of our results. We have this div um, div results. That does exist on screen the moment we run our code. What doesn't exist are the different rows in the table. So uh, we there's the whole discussion about talking about like child elements and so that is that could be rather complicated but basically what's inside of an element this form is the parent and then these labels and inputs are children basically so when we were able to click on that uh, when we were able to set it up for body and then and then the button worked it's because uh, the way we had set it up here what we're going to need to do is to click on a row in our table and give me the data in that row to display down here so the way we'll do this down here is we're going to reference the div pound div results. We call it result or results? Results. results div results. So we're saying if we click anywhere in that div of results, uh, let's work with what we've clicked on. That'll have also <coughs> the on method like like we've been doing over and over and also a click but then now we need to do something here similar to the previous line and our trick here tr what's tr again row. table row the row we're saying we're going to click on uh, on the on the div of results specifically on Pay attention to when we click on a row in a table. We'll see why in a moment. Comma, function, the rest, right? curly braces and so forth. That's going to be the same. OK, why are we doing TR? It's a very cool way, because here we're saying 
any row that we click on, let's take the values in that row to use to populate our boxes. How we do that exactly is right here, uh, further in this function. We, we're going to have an intermediary function that will populate those fields. I suppose we can string it all together into one function, but we'll have this intermediary function in the middle first that takes the data from the rows, puts it into the boxes, and then allows the deletion and so forth. So we will do here uh, delete class prep. This is a little prep first before we actually delete the class because we need to see which particular class are we trying to delete. Our trick inside of here is then to use uh, is to use this. You guys remind me, did we talk about this in this class yet? No. No. Okay, so we'll type dollar this. It's a jQuery selector. It's jQuery. It's something called this. This is just shorthand, literally, about this thing that I clicked. This row that I clicked. I'm saying here, let's run a function, and we haven't done this before, where we're running a function and we're feeding it a, a value. We haven't done it that much. I think we did it one other time, but usually we're just running some function. But here we need to feed this function. We need to pass in a value of this particular row that I clicked on. Which row? It doesn't matter. It's this one. The, this one that I clicked here, or this one that I clicked here, or this one. That's what this is doing. If I click on, you know, is this, this is, let's say this is row 1, and then this one is row 3. Well, whenever I click, it'll know which one I mean because of this. This is the shorthand <coughs> about the particular row, TR, the particular row that I clicked on in this div. <coughs> and pass into this function all of the data, basically, of that row. On the next line, we need to define function delete class prep. And here we'll, we'll type this obj, this object. Oops, prep. There we go, prep, thank you. This object. What's that? Don't change it in the middle of production, that's right. Uh, open close and then curly braces, I'll explain this object in a moment. But here we're, we're defining a function like we've always done, but here it's slightly different because now we're passing in this. And then you say, well, why aren't we, why aren't we also writing this right here? If we wrote this exactly the same way here, it would think it's a brand new reference not the one that we're passing into um, at the moment that we click on. Basically, here we need to we need to give it some sort of value, like when we did up here on up here when we did uh, show class table of classes right here result. Uh, we're passing into this was like our prep right there show table of classes prep, almost. We were preparing to be able to display the data. Well, we were passing into it specifically rows of the result. And here we just said result, because this is like a shorthand. All of this got turned into a shorthand, basically into here. And then we can reference it. Sort of, that's what's happening here. Whatever row we've clicked on, this row that we've clicked on, give me all that data, the reference to all of the data in that row, and just reference it shorthand with this object this obj. So when we create a function we are defining the object at this moment. Right here. We're going to create a variable because this object, this row, is full of three pieces of data. I'm creating a variable and it's going to be $edit crn equals this obj
Okay, so the dollar tells us we're, we're doing something with jQuery. Um, this edit CRN is um, a temporary a temporary placeholder um, because at the moment class 007 has instructor bond. Eventually I'm going to change that. Temporarily it's bond. So here basically I'm setting, I'm saving that. I'm saving, I'm about to save the CRN temporarily, the current class temporarily, and the instructor temporarily. That's what I'm trying to build here, this object. Well, this goes back to the previous question over here about which one of these do we know we're talking about? If we're dealing with more than one thing, we're dealing with the whole row. So how do we know we're dealing with the first piece of data from this row? We further then say here, dot find. Within this row of data, we need to find <coughs> something. In quotes, we're finding TD. There's some, there's some cell in this row, colon, the specific cell that I'm looking for must equal to cell 0. So let's deal with this row that I clicked on here. And now find in this cell TD, TD, TD. There's three TDs here. Which TD do I need? The 0th zero <coughs> TD. 0, 1, 2. The 0th TD it's text save in a variable whatever text is currently in this row in this first cell in this row in this first cell we need to do that for CRN, class, and instructor. So actually, I shouldn't put a semicolon there. I'm going to do the same thing where comma, because I need to do the same thing for edit class, or class uh, title, edit title, same thing. This object, which is a shorthand for this row, find the cell TD, which equals 1 the second item in the dot text. Give me the text of that. EQ equals and then now one more. So the same thing. Create another jQuery variable. Edit inst equals this object find TD equal to two text. And then semicolon. So don't forget a comma at the end of this line. Not edit inst equals to this object. Find <coughs> the cell equal to position 2 or index 2 its text. Semicolon. All that we're doing here is we're saying, okay, you've clicked on a row, let's store that information from that row temporarily. The next part of this is, okay, let's take what that person, let's take what's in that row and put it into those three boxes so that then the person can change them. Next line. Next line, we're going to say dollar there's uh, those, those input boxes on screen. We call them up here. Um, input uh, update CRN, update title, update inst. Those are the names of those input boxes. So we're saying those are IDs. Oops. Uh, 
update CRN. We're, uh, we're dealing with that input box. Don't forget the pound sign. We're dealing with that input box there, which is currently empty. And instead, we're, we'll do val. We'll populate it. We'll add the value. Because I said, not only can we use val to read what's in the box, we can set something into that box. And the something is dollar edit CRN. That's our temporary placeholder for whatever is up on the row of that class. We'll do pretty much the same thing for the next two. Right? This time we've got pound update title. That's what we called it, I think. Val. This one is semicolons at the end. They're not variables that we're creating more than one variable. These are these are commands and then end of line. And then we've got uh, edit title, which we just defined right here. And then the third one, the input box of update inst, set its value to edit inst. So this DD class prep is to prepare to make it easier because we, we can skip this actually completely and have the person manually type in the CRN number and the class name and the instructor's name to then be able to change it. But we, we want to make it a little easier. They can just click on a row and uh, have it auto-populate. Let's see if this works. I want to refresh it, show classes. I'm going to click on my first row anywhere and check my console. Did it work for you? Yes, what's supposed to happen, it's not working on mine, but what's supposed to happen is that I click on any of these rows and the values in the row are automatically supposed to go into these boxes. Now it's not doing it on mine. Let's see. And there's no error at all, so unfortunately that's a logic error, not a syntax error. Hey, uh, this is not defined. Oh, I see Let's see here. That means it's not seeing what I'm typing. Pounded results. Results. Okay, at the very least, let me do this alert. If that alert pops up, that does mean in theory it's working. Okay, so I am clicking. It is seeing that, that I am clicking, so my delete class prep is. Firing, so something's going on then that it's not. Where can we see these? How about logging out the, uh, the variables? Not sure. Or you can. Let's 
see if at least one of them. It's empty. So it's not seeing my variable. It's not saving anything to my variable, so something's going on here. What's that? Yeah, you can do console log and simply type this. I did spell it right. This object, this object, this object. Table row, it is seeing the table row, the zero with row. Content. So it is seeing that TD equals zero, the zero with row. Get rid of that. It is seeing the whole row. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. These are not square brackets. They are parentheses. This is coming from the jQuery specification. There we go. Well, that's why, that's why without paying too much attention to my notes, I put square brackets because I was thinking in terms of arrays, but it's... It's not ex yeah. It's it's one of the objects within that object. So the syntax is the syntax is parentheses. So you see, there we go. Some some real live action debugging. Yes. So you see, I put in that alert to see is this function even working? Yes. And then we've got some console output. Yes, it's seeing the object. So then it's like, okay, what's in that variable? It's not seeing, it's not finding, we saw that it was finding the object, but the whole row, but not the specific cell, and then I saw here, oh, wrong syntax. And notice there was no error. It was like, sure, this will work. And it, there was more of a logic error because it was, it was jQuery. But what should happen now is if I click on a row, it populates that row with that data, or this data, or that data, or this data. All right, let's uh, let's practice uh, a little democracy here. We're at 901, and we have one more little thing to do. And obviously, when we talk about one more little thing, it's you know 40 more lines of code. Uh, but we have now we're we've, we're almost there. We're able to click on a row and we fill that in. And now next comes okay. Let's actually update the data. And that's still yes, it's going to be like 40 more lines of code. Let's take a vote. Do you want to spend the last half hour to get the final bit of it working, or should we wrap up for this point? And when we come back, we'll come back fresh so that when we can do the rest. So let's raise our hand here. Let's vote. Let's keep going. Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, let's wrap it up and come back next time. One. Okay. Well, I guess we want to keep going, so we'll keep going. Okay.
So have you had a class more engaged? No, you guys you guys are the best. A, a plus. What if um off don't talk to me? Let let's uh, let me finish my thought and then we'll do the the lab time for the moment. Okay, so uh, if it works up to this point, what's next is that we then need to have that button actually work. And that button will work because it's going to see there's a class called 007 that is updatable, and therefore in the database internally, we will we will we will replace what's there with our new data. And we need to do very similar to what we did when we deleted the data, we had uh, we had to get from the database a particular class. If it existed, then let's update it. And the wrinkle here now is that we need to deal with revisions. Remember, every single piece of data here has a revision attached. So now we need to basically tell it, here's a new revision version. So after our delete class prep function, this is done. It's done its job, which is to prepare those fields. Let's go to the next line. And we need to, again, uh, reference something on screen. We will do this. We'll have to do this again by a body. Click anywhere on the body. So as we... Yes. We'll do the same as before, anywhere on the body that we click, but then specifically the button that we've got waiting for us, which is quotes, pound, what did we call it, BTN update. Remember that dynamically generated button that, we, that appears when we do show classes, that button that's waiting for us, BTN update. Let me confirm that we called it that. Yes, BTN yes. update. So now we're saying, okay, we're going to click on this button, which is found somewhere on the body, and we're going to run a function. We're going to call a function. And we'll have a function update class. This one doesn't have any this object or anything like that. It'll rely upon what we've done up here, where we've... Uh, where we populated the fields. So on the next line we have to define update class. The whole point of putting uh, these values, the temporary values, into the input boxes is that then we can use them here. But since we created these within this function, we cannot access them in this function. That's the scope of things. If you create a variable in a function, it can basically only be used in that function. So in this function over here, we, can't, we don't have access back to those values. So we'll, we'll set ourselves up here again. We're going to create some variables based on those input boxes. Uh, dollar, these can be anything. They can even be the exact same name, I think, but we'll just call it the CRN. The CRN in question, basically. The CRN that's in the box at the moment is going to be defined by dollar, pound, update, CRN, uh, it's, it's, it's val. And do the same thing, the title. Um, 
found update title now inst and update inst dot val and then we end it there so it's these it's these input fields in question these input fields on screen are currently now populated with the data from the rows the data from the rows is in those input fields. Here we're saying, okay, let's save. Give me those values that are currently in those input fields. Let's let's store them for a moment. <coughs> Next line db.get. Very similar to deleting a document. We need to first get it. We need to first check if it exists. Which one? Well, the one called the CRN. The CRN is where our, which is where the the unique ID of the document is stored, and then that is a result of function callback. That gives a result of function callback with either an error or a result. the curly braces. Okay, so as we did previously, we're going to break this. At this point here, uh, we've got the curly braces opening and closing and the rest, so enter two times there, just to push it down. And in between, we will do an if-else check, because here what could have gone wrong is for some possible reason we're trying to update we're trying to, again, we're trying to update class 007, but we put 007 instead of 007. So there could have been an error there. So we're going to check for this at this point, if error. If there is an error at this point where we're trying to update the class. If there's an error, what we want to do is delete what the person is trying to update in those boxes like we did previously. This is the wrong thing, let's delete it, let's, let's clear it out and then give a message that says you're doing it wrong. So uh, basically back on these three lines right here dollar quotes Pound update CRN. That's the name of that input box. Dot val. I'm going to set that to empty. I'm going to set the title to empty. And we're going to set the inst to empty. If there's an error, clear out those boxes. Don't try to update it with wrong info. Put empty quotes, or we can put null also. Those input boxes, clear them out, and then we'll make a big old alert pop up that shows them that shirt that says you know, we can word it pretty much the same way as before. The class CRN plus uh, okay, yes, good eye. No comma on that one. No commas on those because it's a, it's an ending statement. The class CRN, the CRN, class CRN, does 
does not exist. Try again. This is pretty much uh, exactly what we did previously when trying to delete a class, isn't it? If there was an error, tell people it's an error. Clear out those boxes so that they don't try to keep working with the wrong data. That's happening in the error <coughs> section. We, we did it backwards. Previously we had if it was a positive result, do the result, and then else was error, so deal with error. You can do either or. You can even put in the not error and so forth, not result. There's many ways to make this decision of either it worked or it didn't. In the else section, well, if it's not error, then we assume that it's result. So in else is, is all clear. We actually do have the class that we're, that we're dealing with. So here we have db.put. We used put early on at the very beginning when uh, when we were saving data to the database. Well, we do use put also, but we have to use it slightly differently. Uh, let's let's break up this put into its own separate lines like that just so that we can read this. Actually, uh, before we break it, let's, let's take it back. Let's put curly, curly braces, comma, function, callback. Because that could be an error conceivably as well. So I backed up there. Be, be careful. Sorry about that. Don't break that line yet. Notice my, my put parentheses are still on one line for the moment. If, if, we, back, if we back up way to the beginning, line 37, we had db.put, and that first time we put a class, and a class was made up of a JSON object with the curly braces, right? So this worked because we had the three fields that we were putting into the object and then into the database. We, we're not doing that exact thing at the moment because we're not putting a new object, we're updating an old object. So we have to then now also mention the, the a revision value. So we're sort of putting it raw right here where the curly braces, we're going to feed it a, a JSON string at this moment instead of creating a variable first. So now that we've got the curly braces for JSON, now I'll break this into its own separate lines. And we have first id colon dollar the CRN. If the person changed the CRN in the input box, replace the existing id, comma. The second one was title. That was the title of the class. Right here we have to reference the same keys that we created before. We had ID, title, and inst. We're just reusing them to replace with the new title, the new inst, the new uh, revision. What's that? Oh, did we use names? Sorry, let me back up. We had title. Yeah, when we actually created the A class, we had ID, title, and inst. Now we are using class and name and title maybe a little too loosey-goosey. Maybe we should, you know, figure that out really in our style guide someday. But uh, for the moment, it's the title. 
That's a technical term, yes. Yes. Comma, next line. Now we're dealing with inst, colon, the inst. Well, that looks exactly the same as before, but here's the big secret now. One more field that is only accessible when we're actually doing updates, underscore, rev. A brand new revision number. That's what will define that this is a new version of the data. If we didn't include this rev, that's just like a plain old add to the database, and it'll give us an error because we have not specified a new revision, a new version of the data. And we saw that under the console, rev is a huge string of like 64 <coughs> random characters. So the way this will work is it'll, it's, it actually generates a new string for us. Result dot underscore rev. So that field right there, uh, it's there automatically, underscore rev, and we have to then give it a new revision. And it, it, does, it, is, it does create a new revision for us. We just have to access it with result.rev. So we're saying, here's our new data, the new CRN, the new title, the new instructor, and the new revision. Um, for the moment, let's, uh, I think we need to do one more quick thing, but for the moment, let's, uh, let's see if this worked. I'm going to save it. I'm loading up class BBB, and I'm going to change it. Uh, I'm not going to change the ID yet. I'll explain why, but I'm going to change it to BB, you know, couple of B's there, and X's, and then update. Well, maybe that's why we should have started fresh next time. Oh. Oh. Yes. Yes, good eye. Or good thought. Okay. So I'm going to click class BBB, and it is changed, and I'm going to put something else. because That's what I forgot. We, it is updating, because we didn't put any kind of output or anything, and then we do show class, and it does change. We're forgetting to display it to the user, the change. It is doing the change internally in the database, but we're forgetting to display it to the user. So I will select... 007 and I will change that back to spying 101 and change that to instructor Smith update show class and it is the update <coughs> Uh, 
Okay, so show class, We're, we need to click show class, but uh, remember the point of show class is that it has the show class function, so why don't we put the show class function into else just like we did for delete. Remember up on delete, once we've deleted the class, run show class again to show the latest version of the table. So in this code that we just wrote, function callback curly braces, show class. It is changing the data internally, but we're not seeing it. We're not showing it to the user. Show classes shows it to the user. Updated. If you try to change the CRN and update it, that'll give you an error because we're trying to change an ID that doesn't exist. We're saying let's change class 123 into 125, but there's no 125 to change. That's what this error is saying here. So if error. We're trying to get a CRN and then change that CRN. But that error doesn't that, that CRN doesn't exist. So in this case, it still needs some, some setup, but for the moment, if I wanted to change the CRN of a particular class, I would have to delete it and then populate it again. So at the moment we can't very easily change the CRN because it's sort of like, you know, changing the floor you're standing on. I can't change that floor unless I get off of it, but then I'm not on that floor anymore so I can't change it. It's like when, you know, here's a more technical explanation. It's when Tom from Tom and Jerry is standing on the branch and he's sawing his own branch off. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So that's what's happening here. We can't exactly change the CRN we're working with. So it's complaining that the CRN doesn't exist because we're changing it. So it still needs a little bit of user setup and, and such. But for the moment, maybe what we could do is not display that on screen so that it doesn't, it doesn't let the user change that because it's technically not changeable. Or display it but not have it. Added. Display it but not what? But not have it. Yeah, maybe easily up here. Just don't even, don't don't even. Yeah, don't even capture it. Don't even capture it or something. Yeah, there's definitely ways to to, to deal with it. And, and what was uh, what were you saying? So we believe it's a record that has a primary. There's a primary key. You don't want to mess with that primary key. Because either foreign relationships going on in a uh, again, I'm not uh, I'm not a big pro on on classic SQL and such. So when you say the foreign relationships, does that mean like uh, different tables connecting with each other, or like what is correct? It'd be the foreign key would be pointing to a uh, a related record in a different table. No, from the way I understand it, no, because. This ID 007 only applies to the data in this database, which we defined way up here when we did new pouch. <coughs> right here, new pouch STC class. So this stuff only applies to this one database. Now we can sort of kludge together relationships like that if we reference different databases and store those references into a brand new array and keep them together that way, 
So that is one of the big drawbacks here that you, you don't have that kind of relation. Literally, no SQL. There's no relationship. It's not a relational database in the classic sense. So this is a different kind of paradigm that for, for, for some people it, it's like this, it doesn't work how I expect it to and, and how I want it to. So it might not be the best solution for all people, but for many of the kinds of tasks that people use this for, this, is, this works best for them. So it is, it is not one size fits all. None of them are, but if it answers the problem, it fixes the, the issue that someone has, then it's the right one. So if we got it up to this point, very good. We've uh, been, managed to do the basic operations of any database, create database, add data, delete data, show data, update data. Any general questions at this point? So let's wrap up. At this point, I'm going to put my code in the folder. I have a little lab time, and when we come back, we'll, we'll learn some more and integrate this into our project, because functionally, it's like pretty much it works. We just need to add it to our project, massage it, make it look nice, and all of that. And now we'll have the ability in our project, the point of our, of our, of our school project is, well, the person, a user, wants to save a class list for themselves of classes that they've taken or want to take or whatever. And that's what this is, saving classes, deleting classes, updating classes, displaying classes. <coughs> So uh, that'll be it for the moment. What's that? Yes, uh, let, me, let me wrap up at the moment, and I'll put my code in the folder, and then I'll give out some help.